This is this is a critically important question. Um, I presume I think you said the the question asker is is named John. I presume yeah. John is familiar with this Gartner study uh, that's been um, publicized and 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 shared and through various venues recently. Uh, about eighty five percent of machine learning projects in industry uh, never make it into production. I don't I don't know that I would say fail, but never make it into production. Uh, so the important first part of trying to answer this question is is to talk about why why we think uh, they might fail. And, and so I'll point to um, some work uh, that's based on the incident, the AI incidents database, which is a, a database of, of AI failures um, uh, from, uh, I think it's run by the Partnership for AI or at least sponsored by the Partnership for AI. Uh, and the Center for uh, Security and Emerging Technologies at Georgetown just recently did a study of that database. Uh, and the conclusion of that study was a categorization of the failures and, and why these systems fail. Uh, and there were three core failures, uh, core failure um, classes. Uh, the first is specification. So um, the, the, the desired intent, uh, the desired mission application or business application wasn't specified uh, correctly or specified in, in the appropriate context. And so maybe the, the AI system that was built didn't actually solve the problem that, that, that the teams were trying to solve. The second is robustness, uh, and that gets at testing. Um, maybe the system worked in the, in the, in the lab environment and the development environment where it was being built, but as it gets integrated into a larger system and then put out into the wild, uh, to operate the testing processes weren't, uh, robust enough to capture all of the use cases and edge cases, uh, that the system might be faced with. Uh, and then the last one is assurance. Um, and, and, and the assurance there is once a system is deployed, uh, how do we know that it's continuing to operate the way we want it to be operating? Uh, and it turns out that um, environments shift and data sets shift and you know, to use a statistical term, the distribution shift over time. Uh, and that affects how these systems behave. Um, so once you deploy a system, the context in which it's operating can actually change, like um, think weather conditions, right? If I've got a, uh, a machine learning system that can class, that can see cars on, on the road um, and weather changes, right? Rainy conditions, snowy conditions, the road goes from usually a, a darker color to a lighter color when it's snowing. Um, that's an environmental shift that can have an effect on these types of systems. So specification, robustness, and assurance. And then I think those are the three things that um, there are recent developments on uh, how to better capture uh, the, the, the application domain, the actual intent uh, that we want these systems to operate. And that, that gets to what I've already talked about and beyond accuracy, thinking beyond just how accurate can I build a model, but how am I going to deploy this model? Um, what are the types of questions that are most important that it does well on? Uh, where can it not do it as well? And, and where, where is that trade-off space? So that's for specification. There's lots of work going on in testing uh, and there's an increasing understanding of how these systems uh, can fail on their own without intervention, but also uh, how these systems might be um, manipulated, uh, which is an interesting topic all in itself that would maybe require an entire uh, another webinar like this. Um, uh, and then insurance, uh, assurance, uh, there, there are, there's, there's a growing focus both in the, in sort of the machine learning science community, uh, as well as the machine learning practitioner community um, about monitoring these systems and, and how to calibrate these systems appropriately um, so that the systems themselves can actually know when they don't know something or know when they've stopped being able to perform as well as they can. Uh, and so there's a, any number of variety of techniques and, and emerging tools that can be applied to, to those types of problems. One thing I would, would add there is just that, you know, Matt and I are big fans of learning from failures, not just casting them off of, oh, this didn't work, but being intentional to look at, well, why, why did they fail? What, what was at the root of that? And of course, the different um, areas that Matt just laid out give lenses into it. But I think oftentimes it's super nuanced. You know, I think there's a lot in the news right now about people pulling investments out from AI applications in healthcare. And I think the, the articles leave a generic answer at times saying, well, they just didn't work. Doctors didn't adopt them. But there's probably a lot more to it. And I, I think it's a place where I would love to see the community keep doing work to understand that understand what actually happened in those situations and un unpack it a little bit. 
you know, we uh, have a just a quick plug. We are doing a symposium for AAAI, which is one of the leading AI conferences. And we would love to see people submit some case studies on failures, trying to understand what went wrong and why did those things go wrong. And the flip side of that is finding operative case studies where successes happened and understanding what enabled that success in the spirit of amplifying positive deviance. You know, was it just that the model was so fantastic? Was it that you achieved that notion of a very specific use case, you had assurance and you had robustness or what else actually allowed that to happen? Was it the team? Was it the problem? Was it the context? Was it some combination? I think it's a space where you know, our focus on implementation, we need that. We need more people looking at what actually goes on uh, and what are those enabling circumstances, enabling factors, because to the earlier points on socio-technical systems, the answer is gonna lie in both of those categories. And I think that's one of the main drivers that will move this forward is being able to articulate those and make them more, bring them more front of mind.